All right, how's everybody doing? Good, great. All right, well, obviously we got a big day in front of us here. Um, you know, nothing more important uh, to us than, than Fridays and Friday practice. Uh, to be able to put some rhythm out there today would be great. Um, you know, coming off a short week and, and really having practice time on the field yesterday, uh, definitely, you know, feel like we need to have a good, you know, good tempo practice today. We need to have that timing, that rhythm um, that, that you need during the course of the week. Uh, you know, we try to build confidence through the course of the week in what we're doing so that we can go execute at a high level on, uh, on Sunday. So, um, you know, good meetings this morning. We're pushing ahead, grinding away, um, and just, you know, trying to do everything we can to, uh, to go play well here on Sunday. Um, glad to be home. Glad to be in front of our fans. Um, you know how it is when you have you know a couple a uh, couple long weeks and, and uh, you finally get to go home and, and be in front of everybody that uh, supports you and loves you. So we're we're excited to do that and we're going to obviously go out and try to do everything we can to win the game and, and play hard. But um, we know we got a big challenge in front of us, Minnesota. Um, you know they're a great team. They're playing really well, very confident. Um, you know in all three phases of the game, uh, they do an excellent job on special teams. Uh, I think that's definitely something that you know can't be lost in this game. Uh, they do some things really well with their with their rush units and uh, they do some outstanding things with their coverage units they got some great players out there so um, you know we're gonna need all three phases working together to uh, to help us this weekend so um, it's really it just a just a work day for us kind of back at it and grinding away Matt, I know that there's been a huge focus with you this week just turning the page and being able to you know get over the you know the way you lost that game on Monday night how, how do you think the players have done you know, responding to that putting that uh, in the past you know, yeah, um, I think everyone's done a really good job, you know, to be honest with you. I think uh, we all understand every single game's a one-week season, and, and you move on real quick, and, and you go forward. You don't forget about them. you got to learn them. You know, you got to learn your mistakes and uh, know the things you did well and know the things you did not do so well and, and try to improve on those. But, um, you know, if you waste any time thinking about what happened last week, you're just not putting any effort or time into energy and, and what's going to happen this weekend. So um, I think the guys, you know, they, they get that. They understand that. And we just got to try to stay consistent. That's our biggest thing is every day come in, be consistent, be the same person, and uh, uh, grind at it the same way so that we can, you know, give ourselves a chance to uh, go compete. Matt, I wanted to ask you about Kerry on Johnson. I know things change week to week, but for three consecutive games, you, you've really leaned heavily on him, both in snap count and, and carry load. Just wondering, uh, you know, what, what did you see from him through the, the progress of the off season and, and what he's shown you so far this season that he, you know he's able to, to handle that, that heavy yeah, um, I mean, I think for us right now, we're kind of just we're in the mode every single week trying to do what we can to, you know, play that game at, at the highest level. Um, you know, we've had some plays in there where we've mixed in the other guys and, and try to get them uh, some reps. And, and sometimes in a game, uh, you might get a feel for a particular player that, um, you know, you think is, is just having a good game or is kind of in rhythm, is kind of in sync. And, uh, you know, you might kind of stay with some of those uh, some of those guys in those situations. But, um, you know, I think we, we worked through the training camp. We worked through the beginning part of the season. And I think everybody understands uh, what we're trying to get done in the run game and, and you know carry on certainly knows that uh, we trust him you know in those running situations to, to do everything he can but all those other guys are ready to go um, it's I would say it's nothing from a standpoint of um, calculated to say he's got to be in there every single play uh, it's really just kind of maybe a feel for the game um, you know I would say our preference or my preference is to try to divide up as many of those carries as we can when we feel like we can do that you know from that situation at the, least, at the very least, though, is it, is it a testament to the, the work he put in this offseason in, in trying to be, I guess, able to, to handle a bigger workload that, that he can physically handle it? Um, I think, you know, obviously for a second year player, when you finally get that full off season uh, in the NFL, as opposed to trying to get ready for the draft and do all that, uh, there's probably a higher confidence level, uh, maybe from uh, the coaching perspective to, to look at that player and say, all right, well, he's worked, you know, for this amount of time in our system. We've, you know, trained for an NFL season uh, with him as opposed to uh, when you're getting guys out of college and uh, they're doing different types of training, I would say, before the draft. And then you don't really get them until, um, you know, the rookie mini camps and then, OT, you know, OTAs. They've kind of missed those first two phases of the offseason. So uh, I think you trust those guys that are in the offseason program that, you know, when you do all that accumulative work that they're ready for the season. Particularly on a shorter week like this, how important is it for the players to know coming off of a game like last week that all of your goals are still right in front of you, especially with Minnesota coming? Yeah, um, I mean, I think, you know, we, we understand that uh, we try to really just look at short-term goals. You know, I think we got to try to take care of our business every single week um, and not worry about the big picture. Um, you know, if we handle the, the details and the small things, then the big things handle themselves. So um, our main focus is to try to go out and win, you know, and, be, and beat Minnesota, and uh, we'll go from there. You know, and we'll take one week at a time and, and just keep playing football. It's a long season. There's a lot of things that happen, and, and no matter what, uh, we just want to go compete and play well. You know, I think that's our biggest focus. Talked a little bit about this before, but just in the red zone, obviously there's a lot less room to maneuver. Yeah. I was just curious for an offense like yours that likes to get downfield, yep. that likes to run those vertical routes. Is it do you lose 
part of your playbook, or like what's the challenge? There? Yeah, it, um, you know, good. It's good. Uh, you know, good observations as far as the red area and how that does a change in offense and how that can affect an offense. Uh, and definitely how it affects defense too. You know, I think defense is from the same thing. Um, you know, there's not as much depth to the defense anymore. Everything's a little bit tighter along the scrimmage. Uh, your run support is a lot faster, you know, whether it's secondary support from the safeties or the corners. Um, everything happens much quicker. And, uh, you know, you can also use the, the end line, you know, for certain coverages and kind of bracket players different ways based on that too. So uh, from an offensive perspective, you know, you're, when you do have vertical type plays and Minnesota is the same way they have fast receivers that get vertical quick um, you know they like to do certain things when they still have the space and then when the space condenses um, sometimes philosophy change and and uh, you know different types of plays come into effect and you got to be able to to defend those um, you certainly see that with a lot of offenses now, last year after the snacks trade the defensive line was arguably the strength of the team so far it's been almost the opposite is I mean I know Deshaun's hurt is there any reason you think that the defensive line Lack of pressure, teams being able to run the ball. Is it fair to say that it's been a disappointing unit? Um, I mean, I think, you know, in the run game, um, defensively, everyone, you know, everyone takes responsibility for that. Um, you know, all of us, and certainly me as a coach, you know, that'll start, it'll start with me. Um, you know, I got to coach it better, which we're trying to do, and we're trying to teach the techniques and get everybody on the same page. Uh, run defense is all about fits, it's all about everybody doing their assignment, doing their job. Uh, doing it with good pad level, doing it with good technique. And, um, you know, we haven't performed well enough in that area, certainly. And uh, we all understand we need to get better there, and, and that's a collective group effort for all of us. Um, so uh, we're, we're working at it. We're grinding at it. You know, again, like I, I mentioned, uh, unfortunately, this week, uh, without being able to put the pads on and take a real good look at it, especially, you know, Minnesota's run game uh, with the way that they stretch the ball and then they stretch and cut and in kind of the style that they run the ball. It's very difficult to simulate in that pre in practice in general and then to uh, not be able to do that with equipment on is even harder, you know. So um, just got to continually try to get the, the right looks in practice and get the right technique and all that. And, um, you know, everybody uh, just try to do it a little bit better, you know, from that aspect, sure. Rich, oh, there you go. Uh, say, how much you pay attention when a guy like Mahomes gets hurt last night? Half your division still needs to play in. How much do you pay attention to that? Because obviously it's, they're playing a potentially different Kansas City team than sure. you guys. But do you pay much, pay much, that much mind at all? No, not really. I mean, I'm not. Um we're really just focused on us. You know, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing. And I think for us right now in this part of the year, um, you know, just kind of go back to the question earlier, we're just focused on our games. You know, I think that's all that really matters. And uh, again, for us, our philosophy is we want to try to do everything we can to just, um, you know, uh, handle our own business. You never want to be in a situation where you're, you have to root for anybody else. You know, I mean, that's, um, that's not really where you want to be. So for us, it's just about, you know, trying to get ready to go and play Minnesota. And um, the NFL is a crazy season. There's crazy games every single week, and, and you never know what's going to happen. So for us, just staying uh, focused on, on us is important. Very general, um, but you mentioned confidence in the open. And I know all your players are you know, supremely confident, I guess, to get to this level. But how important is confidence to a player reaching their abilities? And what do you do to you know, instill that confidence, I guess, in the players? You know, I think. Um, What's always interesting to me with players in the NFL and whether they're young players or even sometimes guys that have been in the league for a long time, uh, maybe their roles change, maybe they're on special teams for a long time, and then all of a sudden they really emerge as an offense or defensive player. Um, there's, there's quite a few guys that are playing in this game that have, have walked that path before too. Um, sometimes it's just a unique thing. Sometimes it's just learn, learning to, um, you know, uh, Practice your craft the right way. You know, be a professional. Uh, sometimes you're learning the NFL game. Sometimes there's just all of the knowledge part of it that you look at to learn. And then sometimes there's that light bulb that goes on that just maybe they make one or two plays and they find that confidence uh, behind them that carries them through. You know, and it's and it's really an interesting uh, phenomenon to watch sometimes. I, uh, you know, I've definitely seen it. Uh, but I would say for our guys uh, in general for the team. Um, you know, we always stress building confidence through practice, you know, and making sure that we go out every single day and, um, you know, get good communication, get good alignments, you know, do a good job with our execution of our assignments. Um, and confidence, I think, is someone that's not a, something that's not only just uh, individualized, but it's got to be built as a team, you know, and everybody having confidence in each other to be able to go out and do their jobs. And, and that's really what we get out of practice. Matt, I wanted to ask you about Everson Griffin, the defensive end. Yeah. He, pres he poses a challenge. He's had some success playing against the Lions. What challenges does he present? Uh, present for your offensive line? Sure. I mean, I think Griffin and Hunter have had success for a lot of people. Um, I think they're two really, really good players on the edge. They're long. They're powerful. Griffin's, uh, he's long. He's a little bit stouter, a little bit thicker. Um, does a good job with the power off of the edge. Really, um, some of those um, 
in the passing game, some of the softer sets that he gets, you know, he's able to kind of push those guys back into the middle of the pocket and, and create a lot of uh, stress and tension for the quarterback. And then with Hunter being on the other side, you know, you're kind of um, stretched in two different directions to handle the situations. Hunter, I think, is playing at an extremely high level. Uh, he's, ex he's long. He, he does a great job with his length. Um, he does a good job of using his power and then taking it away and, and a lot, watching a lot of the guys uh, on the offensive line kind of um, get him off balance and move him one way and then you know, counter back. So I think as much as you're dealing with that, um, then you have to deal with all the pressure of the linebackers and the safeties and everybody else coming through the middle or off the edge. It's just, you know, it's really complex from that standpoint. So uh, two really outstanding players on the edge, uh, I would say, you know, just as good as anybody in the league. Is there something stylistically about the way they rush on the edges that, that I guess funnels that all for the, the pressure in the middle? Um, just go to the first part of the game. With Griffin and, and Hunter, the way they rush stylistically, is there there's something that keeps Got it. that funnel to the, the pressure in the middle? Um, definitely at times, uh, some of it's pretty calculated, you know, as far as what the scheme of the defense might be, you know, where they're trying to push, uh, the quarterback in the pocket, you know, they're trying to manipulate where he can step up and where he can go from there. Um, some of it you can definitely see though, in their rushes where they have freedom, you know, to work off of those guys and work off some of the other, uh, defensive players that are in front of them. So uh, a lot of that all kind of plays into it, but, um, they have, multiple skill sets, you know, for those two guys on the edges. They have really good speed get off, they have really good speed to power it, and then they have really good counters. You know, Griffin, one of the great things he does is a spin move off the counter, off his power, you know, becomes really difficult because you're trying to anchor set for that kind of bull rush. And then, you know, he takes it away and, you know, guys get off balance and things like that. And then he counters back inside. Yeah, how much is closing out games a double-edged thing, the defense making stops and the offense, you turn it over to them, you know, rather than bleeding the clock out and, and, and really, maybe defensively, get the um, <coughs> excuse me. I think, uh, you know, the end of the game is always a tricky situation. You know, you got to take in a lot of things into account, special teams, offense, defense, how it all fits together. Um, I would say it's something that our team's, you know, learning. We've been learning here for the last uh, year and a half about how all that fits together and how important it is from that standpoint to play complementary football and not, um, you know, give certain teams or certain players too much time on a clock if you have to. Or um, sometimes you got to go faster and, and, you know, try to do everything you can a little bit quicker. So all of that comes into effect certainly from that aspect of it. But, um, you know, independent of all that, everybody knows that when you step on the field, whatever that particular play is, you just got to go do your job. Just, to, you know, do your assignment, execute it at a high, um, high level, and, you know, things will take care of itself. But um, you do try to emphasize the, you know, the collaborative effort of all three phases working together, certainly. I'm sure that everybody would like to see a touchdown, but especially early when you have a kicker like Player who's pretty yeah. consistent, has a lot of length, how important is it to utilize that and not pass up points early? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, for us, uh, I think points are critical, you know, when we get down in there and, and certainly, um, you know, Prater with his ability to, um, you know, to do that for us, um, and especially in, in different environments uh, and be consistent with it is, is really critical, you know, and sometimes it's a portion of the game where, um, you know, maybe a drive's gone on, you've eaten up a lot of clock and you've had a nice drive and it's gone down and you necessarily haven't scored a touchdown, um, but you've maybe you know, shorten the game by two or three series in that phase. And you do want to make sure you come away with points. That affects the overall, let's call it total points at the end of the game. Um, you know, so the, all those things kind of go into consideration from that standpoint. And having a kicker that, um, you know, we feel uh, very confident in helps, you know, make those decisions easier. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep, absolutely.